Right, um, so I asked my team to ask you for any burning questions about the season, about Survivor and the history of Survivor SA. And I thought I'd get a, two or three questions and I got weeks of burning questions. So many burning questions, there's a fire going on right here on social media, but that's the kind of thing that I like. So I'm gonna try and answer a few of them. A lot of them were quite similar, so we kind of narrowed it down. Obviously we can't answer all of them, but I'm definitely gonna do my best to answer some of them. All right, let's get to the Instagram questions. Let's start with uh, Muns28. Who is your favorite uh, Survivor player for SA and American? Well, you know what, I have many favorites, as I'm sure you do, and let's not put names out there because, you know, that's kind of favoritism. So let me tell you my favorite kind of play is someone who comes into the game ready to adapt. If you come with a rock solid plan and you think you're gonna execute that, I got a surprise for you. Survivor is all about expecting the unexpected and we make sure we keep on your toes. So I love it when players come into the game and they, they ebb and flow with whatever we throw at them. And so that's my favorite kind of player. All right, Survivor Prop Collecting asks, uh, favorite location, well, for me, one of the favorite locations is the Philippines. It always stands out for me because of the beautiful blue waters and mountains. I love mountains and ocean, and we spend a lot of time on boats when we shoot in the Philippines. But um, every place has its own characteristic traits and its own magic that it brings to every season. So everywhere we've shot has been magical from Maldives to Samoa. And of course, locally in South Africa, mind-blowing locations in our own country, um, in the wild coast and of course uh, on the Sunshine Coast. So it is just wonderful that we get to visit all these places. So tough to pick a favorite. Felicity Macht asked, are you informed of the daily shenanigans of the castaways or do you only find out at tribal council? We, I, I'm kept updated minute by minute about what's going on. I need to know exactly what's going on all the time, but it's so difficult, it moves so fast. And uh, before Tribal Council is when things really speed up. So I've got about half an hour before Tribal Council to just quickly get a briefing as to what's going on. And then I go into Tribal having an idea of what has transpired leading up to that, but no idea how it's going to play out. And that's what Tribal Council is about, is to ask questions of our castaways and see where they're at, if anything has changed, and if anyone needs any more information before they make that all-important decision of voting someone out. Sakani Sona asked, uh, what is your most memorable blind sight you've ever experienced at Tribal Council? Well, they're all kind of memorable, aren't they? Uh, but I think the favorite ones are the ones where people get voted out with an idol in their pocket, because there they sit, they have the power to protect themselves, they're so confident that they don't need to use it, they want to keep it for the next tribal or down the line, post-merge, whatever the case might be, that they don't play it. And when they get voted out, the, re the looks on their faces, the people who think they're safe and have that confidence, that arrogance even, which blinds them, um, sometimes just don't see it coming. And of course, that's the kind of blind side we enjoy because it's like, oh my word, you could have saved yourself. Um, one of those that stands out, not because of arrogance, but just because of um, her not seeing it come at all was Palesa. She had an idol in her pocket and you know, I've spoken to her afterwards and it's become a, an ornament in her home and every time she looks at it she's like oh, I should have played it. All right so Ari Bacher asks what is the most memorable challenge you witnessed in the series history and why? Oh my word there have been so many. In the South China Sea it was a final four challenge we had four cages on the beach and we didn't expect the challenge to go so long it was these cages that they had to stand in very uncomfortable position and they had to hold it as long as possible classic endurance challenge and they just went on and on. I think the challenge lasted for about five to six hours. It was so crazy that at one point our cameramen, as the tide was coming in, they were stuck in the water but they had to keep filming and they were being stung. The cameramen and women were being stung by jellyfish as they were shooting this epic challenge and yet everyone stuck in there, hung in there. The storms would come in and roll out. The Maldives, we had cargo nets spun up in these trees. It was beautiful. It was this massive challenge. You had to run across these cargo nets in this um, you know, epic challenge in the trees and Vanessa Haywood ran across and these cargo nets are very bouncy and she flipped and she did a jackknife, injured her neck and of course she came to, the next time we saw her after the medics carried her out was as our first jury member at Tribal. And then in season eight, who can forget Chappies? Swimming and diving and rescuing almost everyone on his tribe, but in particular it was uh, Santini and Anneli, he was saving them. The current came in as we started the challenge and they had to swim across from a pontoon out in the water, swim across to land and then back again. And Santini couldn't make it, uh, you know, and Chappies dived in and saved and then Anneli, the current took him and he was drifting out of the challenge. Chappies, Super Chappies Aquaman went in and saved them. So 
It's amazing. There really are so many, but those are those are some that stand out. I could carry on for days. So Jake Z asks, uh, what aspect is the most important when playing the world's greatest game, in your opinion? Um, is it social, physical, or mental? If you had to pick one, which would it be? Well, you know, we have our three pillars that we go by: outward, outplay, outlast, and you really need to be able to tick. Uh, all three boxes in some way or, or another, but you can obviously make up for where you lack with two of the others. One of those that you really need to be strong in though, if you lack in the others, you can actually pull your game through with the social game, which you know falls into the outward category. If you've got a good, strong social game, if you can build relationships, then how well you play and how long you last doesn't matter in terms of challenges, etc. So my very say super fan asks, what's the most rewarding part and the most challenging part of shooting Survivor? I would say the most rewarding for me, and there's so much, but really is witnessing these incredible journeys that every single castaway goes on, even the ones who are voted out first. Just really, when they come out, they've got um, something is switched on in their eyes. If you look in their eyes, um, and, and, and I certainly do all the time, look straight into their eyes and see what's happening there. And in and, and all of them, they get switched on by this game. Most people leave this game with so much gratitude. They say, thank you, thank you. I've learned so much about myself, about life. I, I have a whole new perspective on this game, but also on the world. No one leaves the game of Survivor a loser. Everyone wins in some way or another. So that's really rewarding. Um, and what's really tough for me is that we shoot every day for almost two months. Um, and I work and I'm always in some state of prep and I eventually, it gets really crazy. Uh, it physically and mentally exhausting. And uh, and you, you find yourself really hanging on by a thread at times. The only problem is I can't complain about it because out there are 20 people living in a shelter they built with their own hands and they're eating coconuts and rats. So that's the tough part. I can't complain. Simply Hilg uh, Hilgard, do you believe that the Survivor SA gameplay has changed over the last eight seasons and if so how? Oh yes it has incredibly changed. Our castaways would come in and they'd play it as an adventure and it, there'd be a lot of camaraderie of course which is beautiful and a lot of kumbaya we call it but uh, they'd forget to play the game and so people didn't really know how to go about orchestrating a strategic game and so that has evolved over the years so now what we see is people coming in trying to play a strategic game with the conflict of the relationships that are built within the game that then make playing a strategic cutthroat game so much harder. And that's what makes for great television. Ranjita H asks, are the cameras on the survivors 24 seven and where do you and the crew stay during filming? Rough it out or nice accommodation? What people don't know is I get here a couple of weeks before the castaways get here and then I with an ax, that's all I get, an ax and a sleeping bag and I have to build my own shot, I don't have to do that. We do not rough it. Uh, in fact, we stay in the closest best accommodation we can and um, sometimes it's really great, sometimes it's okay, but it's always much better than the poor castaways who have to build their own shelter and forage for food. We have cameras all day and a number of crews and then at night we have night cams with infrared just to be there to watch because a lot of gameplay happens at night when the rest of the cast is sleeping. So yeah, we got cameras on them all the time. Ari Bacher asks, uh, which location was the most harsh for the crew and the production schedule? Um, without a doubt, I have to say the Wild Coast in South Africa. We thought we were going to have good weather and then a cold front, as we call it here, moved in. Uh, you know, when it's raining in the tropical climbs, it's uncomfortable, but it's still warm and, you know, you can snuggle up to someone and you'll be fine. In the wild coast at night, it was freezing in my hotel room in a bed with a duvet. I would come home after a tribal council where we were sitting in the rain for hours and I'd be shaking and I'd get into a hot shower and I'd say a prayer for the castaways because I know they're not going back to warm clothing even to a fire sometimes, and they've definitely not got a hot shower. Um, Paul Sigidi asks, um, how do you keep a straight face at Tribal Council when you clearly know uh, that a survivor is lying? It really is very entertaining to see people um, walk on eggshells around or, or circle around my questions. And, and uh, we often do call it the tribal dance because we literally are dancing around one another. And they're trying to avoid answering my questions and I, you know, I look for reactions and then I go there. So how do I keep a straight face with years and years of practice to get the poker face down? The Graham asks, uh, in the survivor world, the US, Australia and South Africa are considered the big three. Will we ever have a probes, La Paglia, Panagia reunion or better yet, will we ever have um, three, uh, have a season of US versus SA versus AU. Well, listen, from your lips to God's ears, because I think we all want that. We all love just the various ways in which the game of Survivor can be played, the various themes that have, we've seen over the years. So most definitely we dream, we all dream, I think, of having this wonderful pan um, 
uh, season of, of Survivor and there are so many different versions of this game around the world. But yes, absolutely, it's on the cards. When? We don't know. So like I said, keep praying, we'll make it happen. And uh, there we go. That's it. That's the end of this set of burning questions. I know there were so many more. I'm sorry I haven't gotten to all of them. Hopefully I've answered a few that cover a lot. Um, and um, yeah, make sure you uh, tune in to Season 9, Survivor Essay, Return of the Outcast. Believe me, it's going to be incredible. In fact, I've got to run because I've got a, another challenge to get to. No time to waste and more coffee to drink. God bless you till the next time I see you.